funding to homosexualize children in public schools, to normalize homosexual homosexuality and transgenderism in the minds of children. Includes a reading list of gay family books for young kids. Organizing events in high schools across the country, such as National Coming Out Day. Training sessions for teachers across the country to teach them techniques to push homosexual and transgender issues in the K through 12. They pay for funding of, and grassroots lobbying for laws across the country to criminalize Christian belief and morality and push transgenderism into public places. Lobbying efforts in cities like Houston, where they were trying to pass bathroom bills that allow men to go into women's bathrooms and locker rooms. Funding for laws that force Christian ministers, ministers to marry same-sex couples or face fines and jail terms. Funding for national legislation that would criminalize businesses that have pro-family values regarding homosexual and transgender issues. Funding for enforcement of oppressive laws against Christian businesses by instigating expensive lawsuits against them if they don't comply, like the baker that had to close their business or the florist, or the wedding reception halls that have had to close because they refused to participate in gay weddings. The companies that are doing this, that are funding this, the major companies, are Citizens Bank donated $25,000, Liberty Mutual Insurance $25,000, Staples $18,000, if you're an activist, if you just want to do your part, go to algada.com, A-L-G-A-Y-D-A.com, and look up the article that Ronnie posted. It's um, Major Corporations Funding Gay Attacks on Children, a list of all the businesses, their addresses, their email addresses, and their phone numbers are all listed. Go get them. That's what they do. That's how they gain the advantage. They pick up the phone and they take action. Folks, stick with us. We've got one more set and we've got a whole lot to cram into that next set. So please be here when I come back. Listen to AM 1050 KCAA. It makes people wonder what you're up to. Tom O'Halloran has a not-so-common-core spelling lesson for the Obama administration. Ready? There is no K in America. There's kids who can't pray in school. Hundred dollar tanks of gas. I can tell you right now this country ain't, ain't supposed to be like that. This is the Wednesday night edition of the Patriot Radio Show, and I'm your host, Tom O'Halloran. Just a reminder, tomorrow, Thursday, will be my first Thursday show. It won't be on KCAA. This will be on War Radio. That's W-A-A-R. It's We Are America. It's the Wayne Dupree Network. If you go to PatriotRadioShow.com, where you're probably listening to my show right now, scroll down, and there's a great big red banner you click that, and it will take you right to the Thursday night show, and I hope to see you there. And then Friday night, of course, we will be back here on KCAA doing our Friday night special, Jihad on America. You definitely don't want to miss that. Now, the southern border. According to recently released data by the Customs and Border Protection, 
5,063 individuals from nations that harbor terrorists were arrested trying to enter America from Mexico. That's in the last year. 5,000 people in the last year. And those are the ones we caught. These weren't Mexicans. They weren't Guatemalans or Hondurans. They were from Afghanistan. 70 people arrested on the southern border in 2013 alone. Syria, 72. Sudan, 168. Iran, another state sponsor of terrorism, 257 Iranians. Nigeria, 492. These are the bad guys that got caught. They're all from states that harbor terrorism. Doesn't mean these were all terrorists, but why are they coming through Mexico? If they don't want to be seen, if they don't want to be known, why not just get a tourist visa and visa and come across the normal way? It's cheaper to fly in than it is to come across. It costs eighty thousand dollars a piece to get a coyote to sneak you across the border. Easily available online. Table 34 of a publication titled The 2013 Yearbook of Immigration Statistics tallies the suspicious folks who were arrested last year. They hail from the four state sponsors of terrorism as defined by the U.S. government, Cuba, Iran, Sudan, and Syria. In 10 so-called countries of interest as recognized by the TSA, these nations are Afghanistan, Algeria, Iraq, Lebanon, Libya, Nigeria, Pakistan, Saudi Arabia, Somalia, and Yemen. Now, airline passengers that have visited any of these countries automatically get enhanced TSA screening before they're allowed into the country. And this is 5,000 that hit were caught, that were caught coming across the border. And you know we only catch a small portion of the people that try to come across. And the Obama administration is always, they're constantly telling us, these are just non-Mexicans, but they're, they're not harmful people. They're just coming to get away. They're, they're fleeing terrorism, or they're fleeing... Um, oppression in their country. They're seeking asylum. But even if 99% of these people had innocent intentions, that means that 51 of them last year and 683 over the last 10 years came here to maim or kill Americans. Do you know who they are? Do you know where they are? We don't, because Obama hides these things. They hide the information about what types of people are coming across. As I said in the opening, they try to paint them as just poor farmers coming up to work as laborers. In Texas this week, four men were caught inside Texas. They flew from Istanbul through Paris to Mexico City in late August, where they were met by a Turkish man who stashed them in a safe house until September 3rd when they tried to cross over from Mexico. Their capture by the Border Patrol set off a fierce debate over the men's intentions. While some members of Congress were saying they were terrorist fighters, Homeland Security officials, including Secretary Jay Johnson, suggested that they were part of the Kurdish resistance, which is like the U.S. is fighting the Islamic State. But here's the thing. If they were part of the Kurdish resistance, they would have been able to fly in easily. For $1,000, they could have ridden on a plane and flown in and not be in trouble and not have to sneak across, and not have to pay the extra $7,000. The 
there also seems to, this also seems to contrast with what Mr. Johnson told Congress in September when he assured lawmakers that the four men were not considered terrorist threats. They're not a threat to the U.S., even as behind the scenes his own department proposed the four be put on a terrorist watch list. The, the Homeland Security spokesman, Marsha Katrin, said that the individuals weren't associated with the Islamic State. The suggestion, she said, that individuals who have ties to ISIS have been appre- apprehended in the Southwest is categorically false. It is not supported by any evidence or any intelligence. She said the DHS continues to have no credible intelligence to suggest that terrorist organizations are actively plotting to cross the border. She did not reply to the questions about the status of the four men or why her department proposed they put on they be put on a watch list. All we know is that when they're talking from the White House, they're lying. Whether it's Obama, whether it's the State Department, whether it's the press secretary, no matter what they tell us, all we really know is that whatever they said isn't the truth. Now, tomorrow night, Obama's going to address the nation. And he's going to talk about his plan to unilaterally make 5 million and maybe as high as 9 million illegal aliens legal. That will mean 9 million new people with brand new work permits in this country. If you think the economy isn't, oh man, this is just, frost me. Remember, I promised you agitation. If you don't think we're in trouble now, you just wait. There's already 40 million Americans out of work. 40 million Americans out of work. And now he's going to give permission to 9 million people to stay here and legally work. That's going to drive down prices. It's going to drive down minimum wage workers. It's going to take every laborer that's working legally will be undercut on prices by these people. Obama is doing everything he can possibly do to destroy our country. Folks, be sure to tune in tomorrow night. Go to PatriotRadioShow.com, 7 p.m., Pacific Standard Time, and click on the big red button, the Thursday show. It'll be my first night over at the We Are America radio network. And I believe I will be on right after the Obama press conference. So that will probably be the entire show. We'll be talking about what he just said and what he's looking to do and how criminal it will actually be if he does it. And that's our show for tonight. Thank you for everybody that tuned in. Thank you to everybody that's in the chat room. Good night, America. God bless you and yours. This is Tom O'Halloran. I'm out.